Admiral Jody. And our Mady Yazi. Mady Yazi and Captain Don. So, um, this is the crew that uh, will be living on Gypsy here soon, hopefully. <laughs> I'll do is we'll throw the bow line off. I'll come out here, we'll do the midship in the back. The midship will hold the boat right now. I'll take this off, go to the midship, take that off, and I'll walk it back. So this is Ozzy, he's our Portuguese water dog, he's uh, almost two years old and we chose this breed because we wanted a dog that would do well on the boat. Um, our last dog was a Lab Rottweiler mix and he did really well on the boat but he was 90 pounds and he wasn't very agile so it was hard for him to maneuver without our help especially up and down the cabin. So with Ozzy, Ozzy's only 50 pounds and uh, He's super agile and he loves it. As you can see, he's very content to be on the boat. You can tell the breed uh, was made for boating. They were bred for retrieving fishing nets for fishermen in Portugal, as well as being couriers from boat to boat. So he, it's funny, even as a puppy, as a puppy he was crazy, but when you get him on the boat, he was very content. So you can tell he, he feels most comfortable when he's on the water. Don and I started sailing kind of by accident. Well, we live in South Minneapolis and uh, down by Lake Nokomis and so we've always walked around the lake with our puppy and so forth and watched sailboats, um, you know, small little sailboats out on Lake Nokomis and like, God, that'd be kind of fun. We had both liked the look of sailboats on the water, like when we would go on vacation. And one day we were at a party. A friend of ours uh, party and it was at her dad's place. and. Uh, we were at the party, he started talking, and he started talking about having a sailboat. And he had a boat sitting there that had capsized in Lake Superior, and he hadn't used it in, I don't know, 10 years? And so we took a look at it, um, just out of a whim, said, what do you want for it? Got a trailer, the boat, it sails, he said, 500 bucks for the package. So we thought, why not? I'll be back next week to pick it up. And so we bought it and we put it on Lake Nokomis near our house. So basically that's how we got into sailing. And that's how we learned to sail. Neither one of us had really sailed much before then. Uh, no big, you know, um, classes or training and so forth. Um, basically um, fly by the seat of our pants and how to, how to learn how to sail. So we uh, got the boat, put it in Lake Nokomis. Um, I think the first time we went down there probably an inch of water in the boat. <laughs> so we learned how to bail boats, uh, bail water out of boats real fast. Uh, struggled trying to get it up, ran into the dock a few times, um, but eventually we just figured it out. So, and from there it was like, um, boy, this is fun. You know, you know motor, uh, we had to row out to the boat, grab the boat, bring it in, and then uh, we'd put up the sails and sail off from the dock. So um, 
we found out that it's a little bit more uh, work and a little tougher than you think because uh, we could sail out but it was tough getting the wind actually to come back in so uh, it was a one-way trip a lot of days and then from there we moved up um, and bought a 23 and a half foot hunter there is a uh, um, Hunter. distributor out on um, 94 called uh, uh, Crow's Nest Yachts. Again, out of the whim, just going to drove out there, ended up buying a boat. A water ballast boat, which means you fill the um, hull of the boat with water and that's where the ballast comes from, versus a boat like this one where the ballast is actually lead in the keel, which gives the weight of the, gives weight uh, um, in the hull of the boat. <laughs> so, uh, we put on the Put it on uh, White Bear Lake, then we put the boat uh, out on, which was kind of too far away. The lake wasn't that big. Um, then we went out to Lake Minnetonka. We were at the Minneapolis Boat Show, and uh, we ran into the owner of the Shorewood Yacht Club, and they were adding another pier out there. So we said, hey, do you have any slips available? Sure, no problem. Boom, 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 signed up for it. And the next spring, we had the boat on Lake Minnetonka. And then we upgraded it to another Hunter, a 260, which is also a water ballast boat. We can sleep on a weekend or all that kind of stuff. So we traded in our boat, purchased a 26 foot boat. And we kept that boat at Sherwood Yacht Club and we were we had that boat, I don't know, four or five years, I think. Um, then we started talking about, you know, what if we want to live on a boat, take off and, and go to the Caribbean and all this kind of fun stuff. Can't do it on this boat. You need a bigger boat. <laughs> and then um, we decided to take another step to get this boat, which uh, is an Island Packet 350. So we looked at stability, sta safety, we wanted the sail configuration. We wanted to make sure we, it was an ocean ready vessel or ocean capable vessel. Something that's going to be safe. Safety was number one. We bought this in the it's from the Chesapeake. We knew we did a lot of research and decided that this was the kind of boat and the size of the boat that we wanted. If we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a boat, we're going to need to know how to work the boat together. How we're going to need to know how to work on the boat, uh, systems and all this kind of stuff on a big boat. So we said, let's go for it. We just went ahead and uh, sold our 260 in, uh, I think it was the fall of 06 and the spring of 07 we purchased Gypsy, the Island Packet 350. And there aren't a lot of them around in the Midwest. They're uh, called a blue water boat, meaning it can it does really well in big water. It's meant to handle a lot of wind and a lot of weather. So uh, we had to look outside of Minnesota to get the boat and we found one out in Maryland on Chesapeake Bay and we had it shipped across land uh, to Lake Pepin. So that's how we got to where we're at today. Boy, we've been lucky to sail a number of different places. Um, uh, BDI, the uh, Bahamas, we've been able to sail off the coast of the Holland. So we've been sailing in Holland a few times, three or four times. Yep. and. Um, I was surprised at how many boats, sailboats there are in Holland. The Dutch are really into sailing, actually. We sailed in the Isomere, which is a body of water um, that's kind of like this. So Holland is around it, and it leads up to the North Sea. Um, Amsterdam is down here. We've also sailed in the Caribbean, chartered boats. Uh, we've been to the British Virgin Islands twice. Uh, in the British Virgin Islands, uh, you often use mooring balls, and so that's like a buoy, and you, you pull up and you take your boat hook, and there's a line attached to it, and you scoop up the line attached to the mooring ball, and you attach it to the bow of your boat, and then you, you are anchored there firmly. Those mooring balls, I believe, have concrete at the bottom, so they're really not going to go anywhere. And um, the nice part about the British, British Virgin Islands is that everything is line of sight, so what I mean by that is you can always see where you're going. It's not like you're in the middle of the ocean and you can't see land. So it could be that an island is 20 miles away and you know that's your destination for the day, but you can sort of see it on the horizon. So um, navigation is fairly easy to do when you're in the British Virgin Islands. Uh, we recently got back from the Bahamas. We went sailing in the Bahamas for two weeks. We were in the Abacos Islands of the Bahamas and that was the same line of sight. 
there you had to deal with the tides. So you had to, some of these harbors, uh, the water could get pretty shallow and we had a monohull, which we think the draft of that monohull was five foot six inches, meaning our keel was five foot six inches deep. And uh, in order to get into these harbors, we had to time it when there was high tide so that we had the most water um, beneath uh, the boat. My favorite, I think, was um, Croatia. It was uh, beautiful, not a lot of wind, but it was just a couple different things. We were chartered a boat with some friends of ours from London. Um, the islands were beautiful, I guess is a good way to put it. They, they were tall, mountainous islands um, with the sheer cliffs, um, and it was just kind of stunning. So the winds weren't that great when we were there, but the experience itself was, that's probably my favorite. Um, you'd, you'd come into on an island onto a bay and the town would rise right from right up the side of the mountain then a castle would be there um, you'd, you'd anchor the boat or you'd med more and bring it in um, and then you would just dinghy into the quayside and go into the town and you step off onto the dock or into the um, cobblestone streets you'd be right in the middle of town it was just gorgeous so that's probably one of my favorites. Now the uh, Med Morian was interesting because uh, here in the States we have finger docks or we have mooring balls down the BBI. So you'd always have something to, to tie to. Um, in the Mediterranean, uh, what you would do is you the, come into town, the, the dock would be one solid dock all the way and the boats would back in stern two right next to each other. Well front of the boats there would be a big concrete piling underwater and from there there would be like five or six uh, lines that would lead underwater all the way across the bottom and up onto the pier so you back up there would be a dock a hand lifting that line up you put the cleat on the on the back and then rock forward and grab the uh, line and pull forward and put it on the front cleat and that's what keep you together and then you do uh, the next boat would come in and you do the same and do the same and do the same so it was very interesting and for uh failed miserably the first time we tried it <laughs> got a got the line caught in the prop had to dive underneath undo it the italians were next to us yelling and screaming and blah 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 so um, but the second third and fourth times you know you get you get to the hang of it after you do it for a while so it was a lot of fun Uh, well, Lake Pepin. Uh, for us, um, it's an hour and a half south of Minneapolis. Um, as you saw today, you know, there's not a lot of development on this lake, so there's the, the hillsides are full of trees, um, it's nature, it's beautiful, um, plenty of water to sail. It, it, you just don't have the bars and so forth to go to, but that's not what it's all about for us. It's about, you know, getting away from all that and being able to sail on one tack down past Lake City or you know again go 10-12 miles one way and come back and or sail to the wind and you know go back and forth so um, it's to get away from all that kind of stuff so that's probably one of our favorites. What I like about sailing, I like about sailing um, is kind of the uh, you know the, the, you get in tune with nature right for the winds and so forth. You're taking um, a big boat like this which is uh, eight ton you know 16,000 pounds and you're putting sails up and you're using the force of the wind to move it you know shutting the motor off which is probably the best part of sailing <laughs> and you know you you're manipulating nature and so forth and, and you're at the mercy of it as well if there's no wind you're not going anywhere um, if there's rain coming in you know and so forth you, you just can't turn a key and and, and motor you can with these things but it's just not the same when you're, you know when you're trying to sail something someplace so it gets you know it's a great hobby for for Joey and I to do together um, it's a community as well a sailing community people are uh, more than happy to help out on projects and I've asked a number of different dock mates here and how to fix things and they asked me how to fix things and we just share our knowledge you know it's a, it's a true community so that's what the best thing about it. Um, well, for people to get into sailing, um, you know, it's not a lot of work. People think that sailing is so much work. 
It's not. It's uh, the bigger the boat, actually, the easier it is to sail. Um, small boats, you know, that tip and go back and forth. Um, you know, take a class, uh, take a um, some kind of program where you can get on a boat and go sailing. Uh, do a charter with some people. You know, get out there and try it. If you don't like it, that's fine. But you know. Um, don't have preconceived notions about it. Just go out and enjoy. You're out in the sun. Uh, you have cold beverages of choice with you. Um, it's a, it's a really, really uh, it's a great experience to get out and do it.